Okay, uh, there is uh, potentially evidence out there uh, that suggests that the uh, gas attack, the sarin gas attack that happened on I believe the fourth, uh, you know, which you know in turn caused the U.S. to react by carrying out airstrikes on the base that they say initiated the attack. Uh, actually, let me let me start at the beginning. So, uh, essentially, what happened is that there has been, there was, at the beginning of this month, a claimed sarin gas attack uh, on a town in Syria. Now, blame for the attack has so far been assigned to the Assad regime, the Assyrian government, uh, in its efforts to fight rebel forces. Uh, and this has happened before. It happened uh, in 2013. Uh, a gas attack was was carried out, and uh, however, there was evidence to suggest that Assad, the Assad regi- uh, regime, was not actually responsible for that. That it was like ISIS or rebels or someone else, basically trying to uh, make, uh, trying to cause the U.S. to take out Assad. By, by launching this attack. Now, uh, at that time, the U.S. was prepared to go in uh, or to start uh, trying to throw overthrow Assad. And, you know, there were some things going back and forth. And Assad actually turned over his uh, chemical weapon stockpile at, at that time. Now, fast forward to earlier this month, and there's another gas attack. And there's been some, some kind of some odd stuff relating to it because, uh, or it seemed a little hinky to me and to a number of people because, uh, we, you know, you get to, to 2017 now and, and the, the fight sort of between the rebel forces and Assad is, is different now. Uh, the Assad government forces are, have actually been winning. They're, uh, eradicating the, the, whatever resistance, the, the people that are, rebelling uh and they're they're making progress like they they've they've improved their situation greatly from the last from 2013 so that that was the main question the main kind of hey, this doesn't really make sense thing was that like okay Assad knows that the one thing that they could do that would keep potentially uh cause America to attack is a, a gas attack, is deploying nerve agent or sarin gas. So why, so that was a question posed, was, okay, well, if that's the, basically the only thing that's going to cause, damn near, that's going to cause us to respond, why would he use that, that weapon, especially right now, when uh, his forces are actually winning? And so, yeah, the, so that happened... Uh, Russia tried to say that no, it was uh, actually like rebel forces that had or uh, that had uh, had the sarin gas in their ammo dumps, and those dumps were hit by bombs, and that caused it to spread and all kinds of t- stuff. Anyway, the result of it was that the U.S. just you know went ahead and blamed the Assad regime and launched an airstrike, well not an airstrike, but a, a missile attack on the air base that they claim launched the attack, was responsible for the attack being launched. Uh, so, because um, basically what they're claiming is that the attack was carried out by air. So basically it was like gas containing like bombs that were dropped, they explode, they spread the gas around, stuff like that. And that's what caused it. Uh, so we attack, we do all stuff, they, and evidently the government has put out a report. Okay, so that's, uh, okay, uh, yeah. sorry about that. It basically, this is one of those stories I have, sometimes have issues with covering because there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of things going on. Here we are, like five minutes in, I haven't even really gotten to the, the new developments. So, here are the new developments. Uh, that attack might not have been carried out by Assad. Now, this is from a a, a website. 
uh, well, an article is covered in a couple places. Uh, I am going off of the the report itself as opposed to the article written by it, written about it. But a, a Dr. Theodore A. Uh, Postol, Postol uh, P-O-S-T-O-L, is a professor of science, technology, and international security at MIT, uh, published an, an assessment of, basically an assessment of a, of a White House intelligence report that blamed the Syrian government for the attack. Uh, and in that assessment, he says that the report produced, that the government's report did not produce any evidence uh, at all, any conclusive evidence that uh, the Syrian government carried out this attack or that they even carried it out by air or, or anything. Is unable to that they they were unable to provide any real evidence, and uh, in fact, some of the evidence that they did show in the report, uh, according uh, to Doctor uh, Postal, was uh, wrong, was incorrect, or the conclusions they drew from it was were 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 not uh, were wrong. Uh, namely, one that they included here. This is a a picture that they that was included in a report, and they claim that this is basically a supposed to be a crater caused by uh, one of the aerial sort of dispersal devices that was dropped, uh, and that that and that the uh, tube. Uh, looking thing in the crater next to the little red sign is supposed to be the sort of the container that, that held the, the sarin gas itself that was crushed or well, was like a part of the the, uh, the dispersal device, the bomb that was dropped. Uh, but uh, according to his assessment, that uh, the way that that cylinder is actually crushed, if you look at how it, it almost looks like it was knocked down into the ground, that that is actually much more consistent, that that is not what you would see uh, were, were it part of a airdropped device. That that is the kind of uh, damage that would come from that cylinder being filled with sarin gas and then having an explosive laid on top of it and blown up. So a ground-based dispersal. So now this is definitely troubling, uh, especially especially when you know you kind of you think back and and you know, I mentioned I think I mentioned this in the last video I did uh, covering uh, the the this whole attack, uh, and, and that is you know the whole the whole Iraq thing, the whole weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, the whole thing where it's like and it's a it's a it's a it's a cycle. Well, it's like a interconnected sort of uh, issue or phenomena that happens when you know you've got weak evidence. You potentially have weak evidence, but no one wants to be seen. No one in the media wants to be seen as unpatriotic. So, even if the the evidence is weak, even though they may not have uh, all the proof that they say they have, no one's going to question it. Because if you question it on the on the mainstream media, you're gonna get fired, or people are going to just absolutely lose their shit because you know, oh, they're being anti-American, they're unpatriotic, they're they're not supporting their country in this time of crisis. Damn it, you know. And the same, I said, same thing happened uh, in the build-up to the the war in Iraq. In fact, you know, there were anchors like one or two on mainstream uh, national news. That actually did question the the evidence that that uh, the and the the uh, the idea of going in, of invading Iraq, and they were they were pulled they were pulled off air and fired. So now you you're in it. So now you have a situation where you know whenever uh, uh, a situation something like this happens and we attack another nation. You will never, ever get any 
uh, on uh, any critical information, true or not, out of mainstream media because you know they're they're just they're gonna go along with with what the government wants because they don't want to be branded as unpatriotic and information like this will never be covered on anything major and it's like and it's one of those things like this uh, i encourage you to go and i'll, I'll put, post a link to the report uh in the description and uh where you can where you can read the entire thing but you know this guy is not a crackpot you know he is let's see let me pull up the the article here all right uh he is let me find out like a little list of his credentials here okay theater postal he's a professor emeritus at MIT issued a series of three reports in response to the White House's finding that <clears throat> President Bashir al-Assad uh, perpetrated the attacks on, on April 4th. And uh, he's actually worked for the government. Like, he was, he was I think he was uh, uh, involved in the Department of Defense at some point in his career. There we go. Uh, formerly a scientific, he was formerly a scientific advisor at the Department of Defense and has previously outlined similar inconsistencies with U.S. intelligence reports following the 2013 chemical weapons attack in eastern Goa, G-H-O-U-T-A. Uh, and the the report that he issued, that he the assessment that he did on the 2013 attack was actually later backed up by the United Nations. So he has a track record of being correct on these assessments and it does make sense so i said let me bring up the picture again you know the idea is like is that the the idea is supposed to be that the gas from an aerial attack that the gas would be in like a, a bombshell and then when the bomb hit the ground it would explode so if that is supposed to be the cylinder that contained the the gas as the the government is claiming how did that happen? How did it get like pushed down into the ground? Uh, and when you read the report and you look into it, like it makes it actually makes a lot of sense that in fact what the way you would get something like this is that you would lay this to the tube on the ground and place an exp like a block of explosives on top of it and to get this effect, which would rule out a, an aerial attack. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, this is one of those situations where it's like, honestly, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I fucking told you so. Like last time I mentioned it, <clears throat> you know, mark my words. Like this is one of those things like it, it's going to, you know, I mean, for crying out loud, they didn't even wait a week. You know, you can't, you can't even get a thorough review of, you know, you can't even thoroughly review evidence from. I don't know, a freaking crime scene in, in, you know, a major U.S. city, you can't fully process and fully evaluate all evidence in, in like, less than a week. And and this is an attack that happened, like, on the other side of the world in a freaking bomb-blasted sandy shithole. And what they supposedly have, like, a full, full, uh, you know, forensic like analysis and workup and, and investigation complete and they're ready to put ships in place and attack in less than a week you gotta be kidding me no they just they wanted to attack they've been wanting to and this gave them the chance to do it so yeah all right well that's pretty much all i have on that uh so you know like, uh, comment, subscribe. Again, relevant links will be in the description. Uh, and I will see you next time.